So today, uh, I decided that we're going to talk about training your unconscious to create what you love with ease. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? I think it sounds like a good plan. So we all have this, uh, this amazing mind. And, uh, you know, we've chosen to, to, to try our best to describe this amazing mind in three different ways. So we've chosen the word self-conscious, which is the thinking rational part uh of you you know you might call this ego this is the part of you that makes choices this part of you this part of your mind wants to you know have a good life wants things to be different uh then we have another part of our mind called the uh, superconscious. this is you know the infinite intelligence higher power highest mind source wh whatever you you know god within the, the the part of you genius with genius ideas and uh this really defines itself uh as you know information and so then we have a third part that we've decided to break this you know this this consciousness into or, or try to describe it or define it in a different way which is the unconscious you might call it subconscious uh subconscious or or unconscious this is the part of us that is uh you know based in feelings and is automatic processing system so the the unconscious uh is is very trainable it it, it learns and today i want to talk about this part of you the unconscious because the unconscious is a very, very, very important part and, and maybe the key to your mind's power. See, we only have in our life really, you know, what it is that our unconscious feels safe that we can have. Does that make sense? Like if, if this, this part of you is, is after safety, if it doesn't feel safe that you can have something, it will, it will throw up all sorts of feelings so that you don't have it. Guilt, uh, it will throw up feelings of uh, frustration or overwhelm or, you know, giving up, whatever it is. The unconscious is a, is a big key, actually. It's a key to the mind's power. And so a lot of times, uh, you know, we, the unconscious takes, I guess it takes a lot of the heat. I don't know, has anyone been uh, into a course and, you know, they're the kind of attacking fear? You know, the unconscious is based in fear. And then it's kind of attacking fear or saying, you know, you can't have negative feelings. Like as there was some, like, it, it, it sort of feels sometimes that the unconscious is against us, like it's a mistake, you know, like there's this part of us, you know, is, 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 a, it, it is a, a big mistake. Right. But it, but it's not and the unconscious is, is so powerful. And in fact, it's it's our ally in this 3D world. It is our ally to help us have a great experience. So this is part of us, and it only has one job, right? So if the, the self-conscious is there trying to create this good life, the unconscious just wants to make sure we have a, a long life. And, and what it decides is whatever I've survived, that's survivable, <laughs> which, which seems pretty obvious, right? Whatever I've survived, that's survivable. And, and However, there's a little, that seems good, right? You know, like if I've survived it, I'd, I'd like to do that again because I know I don't die from it, right? But but just because you don't die from something doesn't mean it's what you necessarily want to keep on uh, experiencing again and again and again and again, right? Like just because you don't die from it. And, and, that, and that's what's really interesting. So for example, the, it, whatever the unconscious survives, it actually decides that it wants to get more of that because why would it go and try to experience something else if it's already found something that it survives right it says am i alive yes let's keep having this am i alive yes let's keep doing this it doesn't matter how painful it is it just keeps having it so what happens in, in our early years you know you know our first three to four years uh of existence Whatever we survive, we code up as survivable and we want to just get more of that. So, for example, if you grow up around a, a distant father who's, who's never there, it's survivable to be distant from the masculine. If you grow up around um, shame or, uh, uh, you know, guilt or scarcity, or uh, if you grow up in a place where everyone works really, really hard, well, that's survivable. And it's really interesting, right? So that's survivable. So there we go. So that's survivable. Anything that's opposite to that, to the unconscious, is dangerous. It's dangerous. Isn't that it? It feels dangerous to the unconscious. 
So we have this lifelong battle between this one part of us that wants everything to be good and different and new and exciting and live the ideal life, right? We, all of us have that part of us. Then we have this other part of us that is unconscious to us that doesn't, that doesn't want to do anything other than what it's already survived. And so we have this battle. And so, so, so this is the this is the the, the little uh, cosmic joke that's been played on humanity is to to give us this awakened consciousness, but also that we have to we also have this unconscious that's based in um, not changing. One part of us wants to change. One part part of us does not want to change. And and, uh, and what happens is that uh, that we have this this the situation. So, so what, when we start to become a bit more evolved and we think to ourselves, you know, uh, well, maybe I need to get rid of this, this unconscious or these, these fears or these negative beliefs, right? Who, who's kind of come to, to that sort of uh, idea? Well, you know, I need to get rid of So every time I go for something, oh, gosh, I have these negative feelings or I procrastinate and I need to get rid of those. Those are a problem. Well, here's where the, the next challenge comes in, and I want you to really get this. The unconscious takes everything as a suggestion. The unconscious takes everything as a suggestion. It, it's, it's working deductively. It, it's looking to make sure it survives. Something takes everything as a suggestion. And so the biggest, the big suggestion that we we really uh, give the unconscious uh, or subconscious a lot of time is that we need to fix ourselves. And so the unconscious then attracts what it concludes. So it makes conclusions. So if it if it if whatever it survives, it concludes that survivable. So then if you grow up, you're an adult, and what happens is is you then find a way into you know personal development conference. Then it just concludes that you know you must fix yourself. And, and then the unconscious just keeps on concluding that you must fix itself. In order to fix itself, it must have a problem. So that's what it manifests. And we're in this continual process, given the unconscious direction. And, and it, it, it can update all the time. And so the unconscious tends to manifest what it concludes. Right? And, and, and then you've got to ask, well, okay, well, okay, Chris, that makes sense. But then... If the unconscious manifests what it concludes, and I'm always telling it what I want, then why don't I have what it is that I want all the time? And the answer is, is that we actually contradict ourselves, right? We actually give ourselves contradictory suggestions to the unconscious. That's it, really fascinating. Mo most of our contradictions uh, concerned with failure and the considerations of a process rather than the result. I'll say that again. Most of our contradictions are, are either a concern with failure or a consideration of the process rather than just the result we want. See, when you want a result and you consider all the problems involved with getting the result, the unconscious concludes that yes, you do want the result, and yes, there are problems in getting it. The problems become part of the suggestion to the unconscious. Right? And this is why you see some people who have gone to all the courses and they still don't have the money that they desire, but they've gone to every course or you know, they're always focused on their health. You know, now they're out doing, you know, saunas and wearing blue blocking glasses and, and ice plunges and all, but they're still just not feeling good and healthy and vital, but they're doing all these things. It, it's, it's why this happens is because the unconscious takes everything into suggestion, right? And if you have to do so many, so much things to be healthy or, or all these things to make money, well, it does all of that as well. Does that make sense? And so we have these contradictions where it's so important to understand that giving the unconscious clear, strong suggestion and then letting the unconscious create it is what we must do. 
See, see, what's fascinating is we're always giving silent instructions to the unconscious. And I remember when I really first got this, you know, like before I learned this, I was so focused on doing everything right. You know, I was meditating for an hour and a half every morning. I was wearing the, the, the toe shoes with all the five toes that point out. I had my blue blocking glasses. I would drink my green drink. I was completely, you know, um, you know, intermittent fasting. I was, you know, eating clean food. You know, I was, uh, had all my accounts for my money in different buckets. You know, I had a gratitude journal, like, you know, you name it. I was, you know, I was doing it. I was, I was doing uh, hot yoga one day, a gym the next day, nature walks, like, like I was just so all in, right? Like everything, like, like I just did it. And so did a lot of other people because I'd be in all these, these seminars and courses and I was, you know, I was doing Wim Hof in the morning and, and just, just, I just did it. Hey. And, and what I realized is that there was always something more that I needed to do. There was always something, something extra, you know, there was a different course I had to do, you know, now I've done EFT and more, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite in, in gratitude. So now maybe I'll try EDMR or, or I'll try neuro-linguistic programming, or I'll, I'll go do some, some energetic healing or anything. It was always something until I realized that my focus wasn't on what I wanted to create. My focus was on what I needed to be in order to have it. And this is what today is about because your unconscious will literally manifest what it is that you focus on, what it is that you conclude. But most of us aren't focused on what we think we're focused on. We're not. We're not focused on what we're actually focused on is is an unconscious agenda to be perfect or to be right or to be good enough or to belong. Right. Like lots of that stuff. Hey, Rupi, I see your message. I just don't have time to read it. So your unconscious responds to your direction. And you're in this continual process of giving your unconscious direction. In fact, your unconscious takes all the input as direction. And this is why... When we do the superconscious recode, the first thing that we do is we get the unconscious a clear instruction on what it is we're creating. We say, we're going to create this, this end result. We start with that. We start with that good intention and we say, this is it. This is what I want to create. This is it. And then we, we give superconscious, we say, let's, let's shift everything so that that exists. And we say, focused on that first. In fact, after a, a, a time, you will graduate out of needing any recode at all. You'll just set your intention. So you're in a continual process of giving the unconscious direction. Now, because your unconscious takes all input as direction, it's important to give clear, strong suggestion. Okay, very important. Now, I want you to, to write this down. The unconscious always says yes. Always says yes to your silent instructions, invisible commands, and your self-conscious commands, right? So, for example, you, you, you say you want to get a new car. You say, yep, I'd like a new car, or I'd like to start a business. You, you know, you go for something, and your unconscious goes, yeah, that's what they want. So let's say, let's say it's a car. So, so you go for the car. You then begin to consider how to get the car. You know, it's hard to finance a car. Interest rates have gone up. Your unconscious says, yes, yeah, it, it, you know, it's hard to finance a car. Interest rates have gone up. Then you begin to think about how cars are overpriced. And your unconscious goes, yeah, they're overpriced. Then you think about taxes and insurance and, and other costs. And your unconscious goes, yeah. And then you feel, gosh, I don't have enough money for the car that I want. And your unconscious says, yes. And then you think, well, and the cost of gas and, and everything else. And your unconscious says, yes, yes, to all of that. So, so you've given all of these suggestions. 
And so your unconscious is just, is just there learning, learning and learning that cars are hard to get, that yes, finances, and yes, and yes. And, and, and what happens is you're so focused on all of these things that your unconscious has created a worldview. That's how it is. Now, all of that could be true, but it also true that, um, that all the time people just need to sell a car fast and they sell it super cheap because they just need to sell it fast. Is that, is that also true? Can I just get a yes if that's, is that also true as well? Like it might, I mean, they're both true, right? Like it, it's also true that it's very, can be very difficult to make money, but is it also true that there's an infinite amount of ways to, to make money, right? I just, uh, I bumped into a, a, a guy the other day. I said, oh, you know, what is it that, um, that, that you do? And he says, I run golf tours. Right now, he goes, I have about 250 people on different golf tours all around the state. I was like, wow, and how much do you turn over? He goes, oh, we do about $15 million a year doing golf, golf tours, and I just play golf every day. And I just smiled, and I was like, there is a way to make money everywhere. You know, there's, there is. And, and so, but the thing is, is we're so busy, uh, you know, giving our unconscious these instructions, but where do we get them from? We got them from our upbringing. We got them from our upbringing because between ages and zero and four, the only way that our unconscious got suggestion was from the world around us. And so most of us, we saw, most of us have this idea that you must work hard for money. We saw our parents do it. We saw our teachers do it at school. We saw, um, you know, caregivers. We saw people at the shop. We, we our, uh, you know, our parents, friends, our aunties, our uncles, like everyone around us, they had to work hard for money, right? They had to work hard. So, so that was a suggestion. Our unconscious said yes, right? Uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, you, we may have been growing around an, an unhealthy environment. So we might have seen a bunch of people that, that aren't healthy. So our unconscious says, you know, yes, yeah, it is. You, you know, it's hard to lose weight or it's hard. And our unconscious just says yes. And it's so wild when you realize how much instructions we're giving to this part of our consciousness that is basically a blank slate. It's basically, basically blank. And it comes in and just has these instructions, right? And so, you know, what, what I'm saying here is you don't have, it's not that you don't consider the process. It's that you just got to get into the end result and, and put all of your energy on how you want it to be. And if you can put all your energy on, uh, you know, how you want, want it to be, and you, you truly get into that, how you would like life to be, that allows your unconscious to create that. See, if you get into your end result and you say, my end result is, is here and I'm currently here. And, and you really go, that's where I want, that's what I want to create. And you set that tension structure. The only suggestion that your unconscious will get is I'm not where I need to be. And its only assumption will be to cook up and create genius ideas to get to that. But most of us, we go, I'm not where I need to be. So I need to fix myself or be different or blah, blah, blah. And so the unconscious, instead of saying, I need to figure out how to get there, starts mucking around doing all of this. Right? Doing all of this, uh, this change work and everything else. And, and so we must teach our unconscious what it is that we want to create and nothing else. <laughs> we mustn't teach it that it needs to fix itself. And we mustn't teach it that it's broken. We mustn't teach it that there's things we need. We must just teach what we want. Just what we want. And keeping your mind on just what you want creates the magnetic mind for what you want. See, we actually all have a magnetic mind.
Someone says, what if creating what you want is actually fixing current circumstances? It's not fixing current circumstances. It's completely different. See, if I want a beautiful garden, it doesn't matter what kind of garden I have right now. I'm going to go create a beautiful garden. Yes, by creating a beautiful garden, I will no longer have the pile of dirt that I might currently have. But I might have started out with an okay garden. It doesn't matter the current reality. It matters where you're going. Does that make sense? By creating, you no longer have what you currently have. But that doesn't necessarily mean what you currently have is a problem. It's our decision that it was a problem. See, it's not. You and I are the exact same creative consciousness and everything else. We create, we don't complain. We, we create, we don't consider what's wrong. We create, we're creators. Our heart's desire is to create. We just haven't never been taught until now. And so by creating the garden of your dreams, the beautiful forest to create the things that you would love, it does not matter your starting point because the starting point is absolutely unbelievably uh, just magic. Just so you know, all of our starting point is some creative consciousness that's turned itself into a human being. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you think your starting point is. Your starting point is magic. And, and, and so the, the challenge that we all have and what today's topic is, is that creation is simple if we didn't have programming of how we believe the world is. Or how we think we are. So what we must do is teach our unconscious what it is that we want to create. The unconscious takes everything as suggestion. Takes everything as suggestion. And that's really important. It takes everything as suggestion. And so when you, when you really get this, that it's taking everything as suggestion, like really you understand that every single thing that you're doing, thinking, or focusing on is a suggestion to your unconscious. Like, and you really understand that all you must do is keep your focus on what it is that you want and hold the tension on that and magic will happen. It will be the biggest revelation that you have.